For me, it was honestly a lot of cigarettes because I was just stressed all the time, constantly not sleeping. I almost used cigarettes to like keep me awake. Millions of Americans are burning the candle at both ends. A lot of us stressed out and not able to relax even when we're on vacation. Still checking emails, taking phone calls. How do we reduce stress and keep our mental and physical health in check? That's coming up on the Morning Medical Update. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, April 11th. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter. Coming up at 825, if you are trying to get your tan started early before the summer, there's one thing that you need to avoid. We'll tell you that coming up here in just a bit. At 8.15, Doc Hawk is going to join us with our COVID count. But first, therapist Jamie Kopakin joins us to talk about how to balance your work and home when those deadlines are pressing. So make sure you get your questions sent in to us on YouTube, Facebook, and on the Medical News Network. You can find links to those right there on your screen. Studies show working long days and on the weekends on a weekly basis make us more stressed and less productive. Detaching from work makes us more energetic and resilient, and it boosts our productivity. A recent survey by insurance company The Standard finds that despite the fact that nearly half of U.S. workers experienced mental health issues since the pandemic began, employees say that mental health isn't a valid reason to take time off. They don't want to use their time off for that reason. In fact, employees are so afraid to use their PTO, many avoid scheduling medical appointments because they don't want to have to ask for the time off. Folks in the KC Metro, uh, they are certainly feeling the stress and the struggle to take well-earned time off. Here is what they had to say. The stress level has definitely risen. Um, family life, I'm not there as much because I have to be gone more. And that's kind of hurts me, probably hurts them more, but it hurts me as well. I really try to find the balance of work and being at home. Just started a new job here on the plaza, but I was working from home for two years so now that I have this new job I've been on for two weeks it's in the office which is good for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> getting kind of burnt out being at home all day yeah. all night just always home I think it might be you know it depends how you look at it if you look at it um, really stressful and you are always not looking forward to going to work I think or not you know like feeling that anxious about not being able to get things done or depending on other people to do your job yeah it's not easy uh, joining me now to help us kind of find that perfect balance if there is such thing is Jamie Kopakin he is a psychotherapist with Turning Point how are you today good thanks thanks for being with us on this Monday you're going to help us figure this all out I need you to get me in perfect balance by the okay. end of the show would you please um first of all tell everyone what Turning Point is before we get started sure Turning Point is an illness support community basically it's a place where people can come for free um, if they're facing any sort of illness so the person with the illness family members friends Anybody connected to, to somebody who is going through something like cancer, heart disease, MS, and, and everything. Um, and they have support groups where you can really talk about what's going on and be around people who are like you and going through similar things. Uh, and then they have all sorts of social events and um, activities as well. Yeah, it's a it's a resource, so reach out and, and utilize it. Mm -hmm. um, I love that underneath there, it says, how to say no to your boss. <laughs> I don't think I... I don't think I do that. I don't think we're supposed to do that, right, Jamie? So tell us a little bit about why this is such a difficult um, time. I mean, we're going to talk about the COVID effect on that. But in general, why do we feel so compelled to not let it go when we go home to spend time with our families? Sure. Um, well, I think there's a few things. We, we don't like conflict. So some people are very, very conflict avoidant. So if a boss says to do something, we want to keep our job. We want to impress. We want to do well and be thought of well. So sometimes we just avoid saying no or pushing back. Um, so the first thing I would say is, is it doesn't have to be a major fight to push back or to ask for what you want. So we can talk about that in some detail too. And then when you get home, uh, similar kind of idea. You can also set limits at home and set boundaries. And you know that's easier said than done. So sometimes the devil's in the details there. Right, boundaries, that's the mm -hmm. big word. Um, so let's, why was COVID so mentally tough on people? I mean, you just, you think, okay, so people are working from home, that might ease some stress, but that just wasn't the case for everyone. Yeah, I think a couple of things. There's uh, the unpredictability. People really like to know what's happening. We like to plan, we like to be consistent. 
Um, you know, if you're in high school and you walk into a classroom and it's a history class and you're handed a math test, that's completely disorienting. So we kind of want to know what's happening, and we've been lacking information, getting some information as, as we're learning as we go. The second thing, uh, besides unpredictability, is it's lasted so long. So I think people are built to uh, handle short-term uh, acute crises. You know, you see, hear stories about people lifting up cars to rescue people with, you know, these rushes of adrenaline. Um, and, you know, a line jumps out back in the day, and we, we jump into fight or flight or freeze. But for two years, it's a long time to have this, this chronic stress. Well, and people rely, work is one of those, it's so routine for people. It's that one thing, even though it causes us stress, it's the one thing you can rely on. Mm -hmm. You got to be at every single day and you, you somewhat know what's going to happen there. Define stress for us. We throw that word around. I feel so stressed. This is yeah. so stressful. This is a stressful situation or you're stressing me out. What does it really mean? Sure. And there's so many different definitions and everybody kind of has their own. So that's why it also gets confusing. Some people think stress, anxiety, you know, worry are kind of all the same thing. They're similar, but there's a little difference. Uh, a couple things with stress that I like to keep in mind. Basically, it's a reaction to something that is overwhelming, something that's very difficult and taxing on you emotionally and physically. So that, that's stress. But there's two kinds. There's uh, stress, which is EU stress. And that can kind of get you pumped up and focused and, and on the ball and on your A game. So that's kind of a good stress. Um, sometimes if you're on a roller coaster or going on a first date uh, or even a first day at the work at, at a job, uh, that can be really helpful stress to get you focused. The kind we usually uh, stress about is distress, right, where we are overwhelmed and we, we feel like we just can't handle all that's coming at us. So how, how do you know if you're stressed or burned out at work? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, do, how is it like where you really think, I may need to take a mental health day. Yeah, there's, well, there can be similar and they can overlap. So some of this is really trying to identify what it is you're actually feeling so that you have information to do something. If you're stressed, maybe you do need the, the day off and that, that helps. Uh, maybe you need to speak up to your boss and ask for some clarifying questions or some limit setting. Um, but burnout is, there's actually three different kinds of burnout, which I found fascinating when I was reading about this. Um, the first one is the one we generally think about where you're just overwhelmed and overworked and you start to get kind of um, cynical and resentful and that builds and builds and if you can catch it early enough like anything else like any health kinds of things you can usually uh, fix it and try and cure it and prevent it or at least treat it um, so there's the overwhelmed kind of burnout the second kind is where you're just bored so you've maybe been in the job too long and you're kind of doing this rote routine thing and you really just are checked out and that can, of course, also be kind of dangerous um, for you and for the people around you, especially in a medical kind of community. The third um, is where you feel kind of incompetent, where you feel like you're working hard, working hard, working hard, and all of a sudden you doubt your own abilities and you feel like you just aren't good at this job at all when you really are good at the job. So it's more of a self-doubt kind of imposter syndrome type thing. So try to identify which of the three you fall in. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I do hear people say, I'm going to take a mental health day, which I always think sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think that the workplace, just from, from where you stand or what you're hearing, they're starting to feel the benefit of people actually taking a day off to just regroup? Yes, if they're really regrouping, right? <laughs> right, uh, right. If, if you're taking the day off and you're really working from home, that's not called a day off, really. Um, but for sure, if you can really check out and, and connect with whatever it is you want to connect with outside of the office, so whether that's uh, sleeping, uh, you know, exercising, being with family or friends, just sort of vegging out, or, or getting involved in something that, uh, that you want to do, a hobby or an interest you used to have. Um, and I realize that's not always possible for everybody. Some people go home and there's a million you know, other commitments there. But to be able to, to try and take some time off really from both and, and have some self-care. Let's talk about the stress gap when it comes to gender. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown in the past that women are more than twice than likely to experience uh, severe stress and anxiety. Why so? And do you agree with that? Yeah, I don't know the exact numbers, but that, that sounds about right to me that um, I think that any sort of minority group and, and you know, we target are women now in the majority or minority, but any sort of group that has historically uh, been not having great access to, um, to finances. Uh, and I know in, in other countries we've talked about that uh, they don't have access sometimes to food. Um, sometimes they're in an abusive situation where they are stuck at home now even more during COVID. So there's a lot of things that, that, that stack up against women as well. And really that could be any particular person, but it is more often women. So let's talk about April. April is Stress Awareness Month. This has been since 1992. Uh, why is it important to have an entire month 
dedicated to focusing on stress and how to manage it. Yeah. I love that it draws attention to stress. Um, and sometimes we need that reminder to say, okay, wait, this is a real thing. There are real people going through these problems. And you know, one of the sort of silver linings of COVID is that we've all experienced this together. Um, and so we all know what some of this anxiety and stress is like. So I love that, that we're being told to pay attention and then what we can do about that and getting educated. A question, now let's get to some community questions. We'll weave those throughout uh, this morning, but a uh, question, more of a comment from Deb, but also saying that you could feel a burnout from home. How do you cope with burnout from home? Yeah, because you can't really leave for very long. <laughs> no escaping. Uh, no, <laughs> but you can leave temporarily, right? Uh, if you have a babysitter, can get one or a neighbor or a friend to, to watch kids if you have kids at home. Um, or just to go for a walk, or even, you know, I always think of chunking, little tiny steps. We can't um, probably, you know, quit our home life, and we can't necessarily quit our jobs, but are there small changes we can do? Can you take 10 minutes away to do a mindfulness exercise, to do some meditation, to do some breathing? Uh, there's all sorts of really small things. Can you do, you know, 10 push-ups so you just sort of get some blood going? Uh, can you walk or pace in some circles to, to get some movement? Those kinds of smaller things will give you a little break from home life as well. The other piece, though, of course, is, is the boundary setting and asking for what you want. Um, and again, you're not always going to get it, but you're, you're better off if you try, if you ask. Um, so there's this formula that I like, which is, um, you know, I feel when you and I want. So I feel stressed uh, when you, you know, overload me with things at home as soon as I walk through the door. And I'd like you to wait, you know, five minutes before I uh, come home or as I've come home to before you kind of attack me as I come through the door with a whole lot of to-dos. You know, something that's really concrete and measurable, these SMART goals that we like to, to do that are, you know, uh, measurable. So our spouse and our partner cannot read our mind is what you're telling me? Yeah, They're not yeah. magical like that? <laughs> well, and it's, it's no joke, though, Jamie, when, like my kids, when I People joke when they say, you know, as you get older, you know, trips to Target and the grocery store alone feel like a break. And it's true. I find myself going to the grocery store just like a zombie walking down with my cart, just going, I'm actually not being, I'm not being um, yelled out from my children to, you know, I'm not taking any requests. I'm just by myself. I'm actually getting something done. But it is, like you said, taking those little moments alone in your own space, mm -hmm. wherever it may be, yes. and trying to find some sort of, um, some sort of peace. Um, question from Becky is what is physically happening in our bodies when we are stressed out? What is the physical or possibly long-term effects of stress? Yeah. So I don't know all the chemicals, but I know the, you know, the, the lion example, right? If a lion jumps out at you in the jungle back in the day, and hopefully not too much today, um, we're, we're flooded with chemicals. So they, they amp us up to be able to fight off the lion, right? Or to run away, to flee, or even freeze, which is the other one we forget about, where we just sort of freeze kind of like a bunny rabbit or unfortunately deer in headlights, where we're just trying to take in a little more information. So we're flooded with all these chemicals um, and they do help us, they're useful in the short term. But if we always feel threatened, you know, day in, day out, or a lot through the day, through the workday or at home, uh, we just have these sort of negative chemicals running through our veins that are not useful after some time. They're, they're designed to help us, you know, have this burst of energy and then we sort of subside. And then that's why, you know, sometimes people take a nap or after they cry or they get all, you know, worked up, we really kind of need to sleep. Yeah. Big time. Mm -hmm. How it, uh, sleep is very important. Yes. I, as you get older too, you really realize that is part of your health regimen. Yes. Do you agree? I do. Um, and sometimes we forget about those basics like the sleep, eating, and exercise, and again, exercise doesn't mean go to the gym for six hours. It just means, you know, sort of moving. Um, but the sleep is so big. And so to try and get in that sleep routine, that sleep hygiene as best you can. Um, and then, you know, the other, the other part of this is, is asking for help. So asking your friends, family members, even professionals in therapy um, for, for some assistance and some ideas. Good advice. And Deb, yes, she says, I love my grocery store time too. See, <laughs> it's a real thing. It is a real yes. thing. Uh, very peaceful and a good, if you, if, you're, if you time it right, they've got the perfect music playing. It's great, right? Okay, let's get to Dr. Hawkinson standing by with our COVID count this morning. Right. Good morning to you. Hi. 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 Numbers, you know, currently in the health system, we still have elective, uh, 11 active infections. So uh, getting to that single digits, which is always a good thing, of those 11 active infections, uh, one in the ICU, that patient's on the ventilator. We still have 40, uh, 40 in that recovery period, so a total of 51. But overall, uh, just what we are seeing, again, around the nation continues to be uh, a decline or a plateau of, of overall cases, which is important, but we know cases really aren't the, the main story. The bellwether that we really need to be looking at is hospitalizations. Those continue to go down 
as do deaths. Uh, we do know and understand that the BA2 variant is the predominant variant around the nation as well. So, But overall, I think things are looking good if we can continue to get uh, up to date with vaccinations and continue to keep hospitalizations down, we'll be in a good place for the next uh, foreseeable future. Good. That is some good yeah. news. Now, you know, I have to ask you, how do you handle stress? What do you do? How do you release? Uh, you know, just a variety of different ways, getting outside, uh, walking, running, sleeping, relaxing, just any way to, to kind of decompress, maybe turning off the phone, all of those types of Do you of tell things. your boss no? Um, not very often, do not you? Not very often. <laughs> Me neither, right? <laughs> all right, so let's get back to our stress talk. Uh, people often fight, a, 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 it's hard, and people fight yeah. to truly have to turn mm -hmm. off um, and turn away from it. People are just instilled to answer their phone call and take care of business, so take a listen. I'm self-employed, but it really doesn't matter because I still have to work for someone. Um, so typically, it's like, you know, I'm in music. So if I hear something, if I go somewhere that I know one of my friends or colleagues are there, they'll ask me to play. I work for the fire department, so I, I work 24 off 48. When I'm not at work, like there's nothing for me to take home, but I'm always, I love my job. Um, so. I'm always trying to, to help people. So even if I'm off duty, I'm still uh, thinking of ways I can help people. Well, we run seven days a week. Um, or at least walk, but pretty much run. And okay. we've been doing it for many years. I think we run every day now. And I think that's how we manage stress in our lives for sure. Absolutely. Every day, get outside. Jamie, that's a good healthy way to, to manage stress, right? Just, yeah. Just sunshine fresh air and yes. movement especially now that the weather is getting nicer it's Absolutely. easier to get out other ways to handle stress i have to tell you because i've been i kind of started a little conversation here on our on our feed people do enjoy shopping therapy yeah. they there's something about it i think that's just calming um you know assuming you're not going into debt over it but right. that brings on a whole other issue but what right. other ways could people in a healthy way, right. manage stress. Well, I think part of the, the shopping and the going to you know the grocery store or Target or wherever is also getting out and seeing people. Just sort of we've been cooped up and isolating and scared that now we're trying to get out and, and just look around and notice things. Um, so that's a great way to just, just notice your surroundings and take it in. So you can, you know, we talk about mindfulness and really that just means being in the moment. But there's all sorts of mindfulness exercises and ways to um, to you know, look around, see what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're feeling, which can be an inside feeling or actually a, you know, a touching feeling, mm -hmm. um, and really engage the senses. So there's that when you're out and about. Yeah. Um, exercise we've touched on, the sleep, eating, and eating healthy. Um, uh, gosh, any hobby, again, that you used to take up, music, art, drawing, you know, these things don't have to be expensive and you don't have mm -hmm. to be wonderful at them. They just have to be a little bit of a distraction and something that you kind of find it a little interesting and, yeah. and try something new. Something that brings you joy. You mentioned now that masks are coming off out in public, you're right, going to these places where you can smile because it's saying that smiling can improve your mood, just yeah. laughing, just finding yourself doing, like you said, your your own natural senses coming into play. You don't have to go shopping and spend a lot of money, although that can be fun. Mm -hmm. um, but just really being in tune with what your natural body is trying to exude, I would imagine, right? Yes, yes. And the shopping piece is interesting too because <laughs> you know we do get pleasure and some endorphins released when we buy things and we find you know sort of the hunt or the sale um but you're right to have a budget like anything else uh, you know eating can be can be wonderful too so it's sort of the idea of budgeting too we don't need to eat a lot to feel good we don't need to shop a lot to feel good we just need sort of some some balance and some variety all right so let's talk about i want to go back to this burnout a little bit and just people finding the balance at work and you know you go back 20, 30, 40 years ago when people go to the workforce. I mean, it's just, it's all or nothing. I mean, you, yeah. it's hard to say, I've got a family at home, or I've got to get to school activities, or my family comes first. Um, Judy says, I'm a, I'm a teacher. It's taken me 30 plus years to learn to not bring my work home. That's the opposite yeah. of it. How do you, how do you, how do you find balance and not b letting it bleed? Your work says you can stop and go home, but you you aren't taking that power yes. and saying, I'm gonna leave it at, at, at work. You know, I think a lot of it is the modeling from the supervisor or the boss. So if they say, go home, it's five o'clock or three o'clock or whatever it is, go home, but they don't do that, you know, that's quite a mixed message, right? So um, if, if the supervisors and the people at the top are modeling, taking care of yourself, taking actual vacation days, using your vacation days, 
um, and you know, and, and cutting that off, then I think it's easier for people to realize that this is this is a real thing and this is something we need to do. You make a good point there. Yeah, you're going to do what your boss does. You, you mm -hmm. don't want to. It's hard to leave before the boss. It's hard to you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to do those kind of things. And if they're taking phone calls, you should be taking phone calls or answering emails. Yeah. Um, question. Uh, another question uh, Deb had was. A new stressor is people are working from home, but then feel like they get called back into work to help people catch up on things. So I also just help us understand this balance between people working at the office, which can feel weird. You've got people in the office, but then mm -hmm. you've got people working from home and trying to find how, how that all fits into the picture. Yeah, again, it's such a transition, right? Because we didn't have, you know, I know kids will be surprised. We didn't always have cell phones. We didn't always have computers you could take home. Um, so we did that and then we actually worked from home and then we kind of got used to, okay, maybe this is better in some ways to be able to work, you know, when I feel like it at eight o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. Um, so now we're kind of getting back into the office and some people I think are, are doing well where they have sort of three days in the office, two days at home. So yet another transition, which again, we're not programmed for great, uh, change in our world. Um, so we're trying to get used to all these, these fast changes. Um, so again, I think it's about figuring out, okay, I feel what? I feel strange, I feel weird. Oh, I, I feel like I may be getting stressed and burned out. Great, we've identified the feeling, why? You know, is it because I'm, I've got my phone attached to me all the time? Well, let's have some time where we turn off our phones. Uh, maybe dinner is a time we don't have phones. Maybe I turn off my phone after 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., whatever that time is that's realistic for you. Um, but, but readjusting to that new normal. And so what happens if we don't deal with stress the right way? Yeah, well, uh, we get lots of chances to get it right, right. Uh, because it'll keep happening. Uh, it's almost like a recurring nightmare. You know, we, we, our bodies are trying to tell us something or our minds are trying to tell us something. So if we don't get it right, um, we, we obviously feel stressed, but we have a lot of physical somatic concerns as well. Sometimes people have stomach aches, especially kids, they'll often have stomach aches, headaches, that kinds of stuff. Um, so we need to listen to ourselves as opposed to trying to just press on and press on. Now, of course, sometimes we need to press on. So right, if you're, if you're in a hospital and you're in an emergency room, you, you have to do your job but we also then need to try and carve out some, some downtime as well. And again, some settings are, are easier to do that and some bosses are more willing to, uh, to accommodate that. Do we have any reporter questions on the line? Okay, we are good. Um, we're gonna kind of continue to get to some uh, questions from the community as well. But uh, this person says, I'm totally gonna use the I feel when I need technique for uh, when I get home and right when I walk in the door. She said her husband, I think, said what's for dinner. She's like, I don't know, what are you gonna make? Um, so d like kind of dive into that a little bit more about I, the communication sure. portion of, because that's not always easy. I think you're right. You feel stressed, you snap at somebody. It's hard to kind of take a minute to say, hey, just give me a minute. This yeah. is what's going on with me. This is what I need. and so on and so forth. Help us walk through that because that's not always easy. No. That is a, that's a technique you really gotta, you gotta work on. Yes, and the practice piece helps yeah. too. So being aware that, okay, we're in a bad cycle. Let's say I'm coming home and my spouse and we're doing this routine um, to say, okay, this, this isn't working. So sometimes you can take your time on your own to think it through and figure out, okay, what, what's going on here? The other time, sometimes if, if you've got a good partner, they can do it with you, right? You can say, all right, the, we're, we're in a bad rut. What is happening here? Okay, well, I'm tired and you're hungry. So we're hangry together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and w what are we gonna do about this? With little kids, sometimes it's easier, right? You hand them a granola bar, you hand them something to be like, okay, hey, take this, then we'll talk. Or you hold them, right? You hold a little kid maybe till they kind of relax a little and they calm down and the emotion comes down, the logic comes up. So we kind of need to do this with adults as well. Um, so to be able to say, you know, this isn't working, let's figure out together something that works better. Um, and it would be the same, I think, with a boss or the same with, with a friend or a spouse, uh, rather than sort of doing the same old, same old. You know, if, you're, if there's a wall, right, that is immobile and you're pushing on the wall and pushing on the wall and it's not moving, we got to do something else like get a better tool, right? Get a wrecking ball, get a ladder and go over it. You, you've got to kind of be creative. And that only comes when your emotions can kind of come down a little bit. So the creative thinking can come up. So I'm going to task you with this to help people feel good about using their well-earned paid time off. I think that's mm -hmm. a, even when people try to take time off, I think there's a guilt. Help us through the guilt. Sure. Uh, well, if we, you know, guilt and shame are interesting. Sometimes they're basically if you feel like you've done something wrong right mm -hmm. but if you have time off uh it's not wrong to use it so it, it's a con it's a conflict right i feel sort of bad but i'm not sure why i feel bad what's going on here so maybe you're feeling like you're abandoning your team if you take time off and they're burning you know the candle at both ends 
um, okay, so how do you help your team? Is it really by working more or is it something else? Is it taking the time off that you need so that you can relieve them when they need time off? And that's sort of a, a way of thinking through it that, that might help you get the time off and then get the time off. Certainly if you could lower the, the workload, um, that would be great. So maybe it's a, a matter of the, the group coming and, and figuring out how to lessen the workload. You know, another piece that we sometimes forget is the confusion at work. Sometimes people think they have uh, the right way to do things and it's really taking too long or um, they're doing jobs they really don't need to do. So sometimes that clarity, uh, kind of like the example of uh, you know, what's for dinner, if the clarity is, hey, I only cook on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and we eat out on Wednesdays, and you cook on Saturday, you know, that's called role clarification, really. And then when I come home, I know I can expect that this is my day off. Oh boy. Okay. That, that would be I was, nice. <laughs> I was taking notes I mean, in my head. I was like, okay, like I said, you got to practice at it though. Yeah, you got to get yeah. on the same page. And asking, speaking up. What are your thoughts about trying to keep work life and, and personal life separate? Uh, you know, bringing stressors from home into work and work into to the house. Yeah. Um, sometimes you feel like your work family is, is your outlet and sometimes your, your, your home family is your outlet to work. Uh, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? What's the best practice in your, in your opinion? It's hard because we're talking about really trying to compartmentalize and separate, mm -hmm. separate, you know, work and life and different kinds of things. Uh, and we're, we're the same person, right? So we, we bring all of our baggage wherever we go. Uh, so I like the idea of compartmentalizing, uh, which I picture as putting something on a shelf, right? So you're saying, um, I am home now. I need to take this work stress. I need to identify it and put it on a, on a shelf, maybe in a box and tie it up with a little ribbon if you can, and put on a box knowing that I can take this off the, off the shelf whenever I want. It's a little different than sweeping it under the rug or ignoring the elephant in the room where you're just saying, um, I, I'm not gonna worry about that or I'm gonna stick my head in the sand. We have all these expressions mm -hmm. to kind of explain it a little bit better. Um, but if you can really say, okay, I am really stressed about this thing at work, but I have to eat or I have to you know, help my kid with their homework. So I'm gonna put it on the shelf for now and it's there. You know, I haven't forgotten about it, but I, I just can't deal with it right now. I need to shift gears. Sometimes that, that helps us shift those gears and, uh, and refocus for now. Kathy says, I've been, I've been retired for many years, even pre-COVID, I've had trouble dealing with stress. Why is this? What else besides a group session or exercise could help? Is there just yeah. anything for somebody who just can't quite manage the little stressors that come up? Sure, and it's, it's hard. And I think um, if there were an easy answer, we, we would all do it and we'd have no stress. So it's very complicated, very layered. I do like the idea of, again, getting educated through programs like this, mm -hmm. reading, getting online, watching videos, you know, short videos that give you some tips, bullet points that give you some ideas. And then the idea is tailoring it to you, to your personality, to your family. And I think that's where the therapy can come in uh, because it's really tailored to you. It's not just, you know, do these three things and everything will be fine. Um, so it's, it's taking those ideas and trying something different. And we touched on practicing. You know, if you were going to learn basketball and you'd never seen or heard of basketball before and somebody's going to tell you what to do and they hand you a ball, you're going to be kind of lost. I mean, you might not know what a hoop is, right? You have to know the vocabulary, you have to practice, and you're going to miss a million times before you kind of get the, the hang of it. So be kind to yourself, be patient with yourself, and, and keep trying different things. Give yourself, give others a break. Uh, yeah. Before I get to your final thought, what else is stressing people out? What is, I mean, we've talked about COVID for the last couple of years, but I mean, what would be the top two um, in different age groups for yeah. well, stressors for adults? Is it still money? You know, all that comes to mind, the, the COVID still seems to be top of mind and, and money for sure. And, and COVID has wrapped that up, right? That jobs are uncertain, finances are uncertain. Um, yeah. Gosh, I would, I would say it's relationships, whether it's a relationship with, you know, trying to find love or find the person that really fulfills me, um, or if it's friendship, or if it's a, finding that partner. And I think work is kind of like that. It's like finding a family or finding a good relationship. So, um, you know, I think we're always looking to improve and looking for what's better and better and better, uh, which can be a good thing because it pushes ourselves, but also to really value what we have and, and reinforce the good things that we've got. That's, so, that's yeah. interesting, because I think when we think of adults, we think money and job yeah. and kids are the big stressors, but I kind of, I just took a pause to think that that was that people are wanting to have better relationships in their life. That must tell us something. Yeah, and it's, it's maybe something we can do, right? Yeah. To say, you have control over it. Um, yes, at least some, right? right. Uh, it does take the other person too, but at least we have a start. <laughs> yeah, usually. Yeah, but yeah, 
Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, well, gosh, that's always, I always hang on your every word. It's hard for me to look at my notes because I'm always just like, I'm writing it out and I'm taking all your notes. So thank you so much for being with us today. So insightful. Just some final thoughts. What do you want us to know? And, and certainly please touch on seeking help if people need help. Sure. Um, yeah, I think seeking help is, is primary because a lot of people feel like we have to do this on our own. We have to be strong, pull up ourselves by our bootstraps, all of that. Um, or even at work, if I speak up, I might get fired or people might not like me. Um, you know, and these are very, very valid thoughts. But to sort of challenge our self-talk, right, to challenge that and say, um, okay, but does that fit in this example? So can I speak up? How can I speak up? How can I try and get what I want? Um, because I think as a final thought, we, we need to have options and we need to not feel stuck. And so sometimes brainstorming and, and talking with others helps us get out of our head and have some options. Well, sometimes we get stuck. So please promise yes. you'll come back. Thank you. I would love to. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, Dr. Hawkinson, final thoughts from you. Uh, you know, everybody absolutely try and find ways to reduce their stress. We know there is just so much stress in everybody's life right now for, for many reasons. So I think it is important. Uh, again, we heard our, uh, the interviewees uh, on the video, you know, getting outside and trying to do those things, especially when there's nice weather like right now, uh, is a great, uh, a great method of trying to reduce stress. We've always uh, been proponents of that here on the show. The other thing is continue to be um, obviously up to date with your vaccinations. We know that uh, overall case counts are going down. The circulation of the virus is decreased, although it still is out there in the community. I think people should continue to understand that. But as we kind of get into this warmer weather in the summer and spring, hopefully it will be able to continue to stay down. And also importantly, we also have had questions about children's vaccines. and. We are hoping that um, sometime soon within the next couple months, we'll have a little bit more information and be able to get those children vaccinated um, prior to uh, school year uh, next year. Uh, we hope that's coming up. I did hear an interview with uh, one of the FDA leaders, uh, Peter Marks, and that was one of his main goals as well. They are currently analyzing and addressing all of the information and data. So hopefully we'll get some information for that soon as well. All right, well, we are just weeks away from the unofficial start of summer, and it's hard to believe, but some people are still using tanning beds. You might have heard of a product called uh, Melanotan. I have not heard about that, but you're going to learn about it. It's an illegal hormone that can cause harm to your body. All Things Heart host Alexis Del Cid breaks down this morning's medical headlines. I'm here with Dr. Chris Tomasian, a University of Kansas Health System dermatologist, we want to talk about melanotan, Dr. Tomasian, because you also make it a point to use your own social media to dispel myths or warn people who might be trying something that's dangerous. And you think melanotan is dangerous. Yeah, so melanotan is a very interesting new trend, which is obviously dangerous. And with all trends, you have to be worrisome if, if it's beneficial or dangerous. And this is basically a synthetic hormone that people are injecting or using a nasal spray to ingest to make themselves more tan. But with that, it comes a lot of other side effects. They're calling it Melanotan 2, and they're showing these professional looking nasal spray bottles or injectables. So where are they getting it? If it's not FDA approved and it's dangerous, who's selling it? So one online, actually, I was just scrolling through the internet to see what's who's selling this and a lot of you know tanning salons have it and all right okay so did we lose alexis on that one okay we will we'll try to get that story back to you tomorrow because that's very interesting okay we got mother's day it's just around just around the corner but who's counting? I've already told my kids to start getting ready for Mother's Day. So here is a QR code right here on your screen. Um, I know people stress out a lot about what to get mom. I know I do. Um, so please send us in a message or a note about what the perfect Mother's Day gift is for you or what ideas you have. So please send those in. We'd like to share them. We're always looking for good ideas. You can email those to the Medical News Network as well. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being with us today. Don't forget you can catch our shows anytime on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. Have a great day. Coming up tomorrow on the Morning Medical Update. Jayhawk fans still riding the high from the big national championship win.
You've seen him on the court, and Tuesday you'll meet the team responsible for keeping that team on their winning ways. Join us at 8 on these social media channels. Subscribe to our morning medical update and open mics with Dr. Stites podcasts. Now everywhere podcasts are available.